a Mini Cooper S. Now, I actually ain't driven one of these cars for bloody ages and I love them. And I think second to that, I don't think I've ever even had one on my channel. So this is quite a, this is quite a special thing to have one of these on my channel. So it's obviously an old car, it's 2004, uh, but they're a car that everyone loves. So uh, watch this video to the end to find out how quick this thing does 60 in it's a 15 year old car it might have lost a bit of power over the years but i'm interested to know how quickly we can get it to 60 using a draggy box as well so um yeah 2004 mini cooper s well right, we've got uh, um my man jam making loads of noise in the background so i'm going to apologize for him right now uh, but i want him cleaning that car so we're going to leave him to it mini yeah uh mini mini where do we start so much to be said about a mini because it's such a big brand isn't it BMW bought the, the Rover brand in year 2000 and I think their, their main motive for buying the brand was to recreate the Mini, do a German Mini. And when it came out, uh, it was, what, what were they, 2001 I think they came out, uh, they were a seriously modern looking thing for their time. Now, let me just quickly explain how we work for those that don't know. Uh, we're called Bin Car, we're a car auction and our cars the lower end of our cars anyway we do have a retail side as well but the cheaper stuff like this gets sold as it is so you'll notice like marks on the wheels you know a bit of, bit of bad paint here and there it ain't a perfect car if you come around the back look that stuff like that we don't get anything done we get jammed to clean them we sometimes MOT them and that's about it okay look back like bit of damage but we're not here to look at a glamorous mint perfect mini we're here to just get a Cooper S on the channel so uh, where do I start it's got John Cooper Works badges on the wheels. I suppose that's um, a bit of character, I suppose, isn't it? Inside, we've got half leather interior. This is, I say facelift. I don't know if they facelifted them in 2004, but the 2004 onwards versions have got this nicer looking steering wheel. The previous steering wheel isn't quite as attractive, but it ain't gonna make or break um, an early car anyway. So uh, John Cooper Works just on the dash there as well. And, Sort of carbon, is that, is, that's actually carbon fiber. That's nice as well. So they're a car with a hell of a lot of character and they're a 1.6 supercharged engine, hence why they're called an S. They're always called a Mini Cooper, but BMW introduced the Cooper S, which stands for supercharger. And under the bonnet, you've got a big intercooler and a nice little supercharger, which gives us 170 bhp. All right, so what we're going to do, standard platform for all my videos, is we've done the walk around, we've done a bit of talk. We're gonna jump in the drive seat, go for a little drive, and once I finish the drive, we're gonna do the draggy times, yeah? Let's go. We're having like the best summer ever, aren't we? It is bloody roasting hot today, which is great. I, like, I, love, I love hot weather, but when you're driving a car with no aircon and um, you're filming, you can't really have a window open because wind noise, I think, I don't think I'm going to have much choice today. So if there is a bit of wind noise, I'm sorry. I've got to have the window open a little bit because it's bloody boiling today. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Mini. You can hear the whistling of the, whistle, is it whistle or whir? Of the supercharger straight away. It sounds amazing. Now, common faults. This is what we need to talk about with Minis, yeah? Because me as a car trader, I'm a guy that buys cars for a living. And when I'm faced with a Mini or any car, I pretty much know on, I wouldn't say every car I'm going, but lots of cars, I know exactly what the common faults are to look out for. With minis, the two most, most obvious common faults that anyone should look out for when they're buying a mini, of this era anyway, is firstly the gearbox, yeah? Now, I've got huge feet and we've got a tiny footwell. When you combine big feet with a small footwell, sometimes you're like you're being, getting your feet right on the pedals is a bit of a pain. So when you're changing gears sometimes, you'll notice it's a bit of a bit of a struggle. So doing a lot 60 time in this with quick gear changes, it's gonna be a bit of a task later, but we'll worry about that later. But common faults with these cars are gearbox issues. So and the reason why I mentioned about the tight space around the footwell is because sometimes if you struggle to change gear on a middle mini, it could just be for that reason, yeah. But if you are constantly struggling to change gears and it's struggling to get into gear, it's making horrible noises in reverse if it's not if it's sort of clunking in reverse or struggling to even get into reverse you need a new gearbox it's a common issue with minis i can't say that i've ever done a gearbox on a mini myself so i'm, I'm not even talking from experience but i do know that there is a bit of a horror story with these gearboxes so look out for that secondly when you get into a mini on tick over 
sometimes even when you're driving like now you'll hear a, a real loud whir yeah not it's not a supercharger it's a steering pump and if your steering pump is whirring like mad you need a new steering pump and the last time I replaced the steering pump on a mini is this one's um, got an issue with the glove box let me talk about that glove box handle see the glove box just opened on its own there but that's because someone broke the handle again showing that this is not a perfect example but yeah the last time I've done a steering pump on a mini it cost about 250 300 quid so it ain't a cheap thing to fix like I said as well this is not a perfect example of a mini for a number of reasons cosmetically it ain't a stunner it's done about uh, 97,000 miles so it ain't great mileage but it is you know for the age of the car it's pretty good mileage but it ain't low mileage let's face it it's also a categorized car i don't know if i mentioned that earlier again not ideal but it would affect the value if you own a categorized car you'll know that that affects the value of your car yeah but mechanically it's a bloody good one i think that's why i wanted to get it on the channel today it's, it drives really well okay which is obviously important all right so when you drive a mini <laughs> so i don't know if this car has been tuned or not but Honestly, like, they're 170 bhp, yeah? 1.6 four-cylinder engine, obviously with the supercharger. You'll notice, the first two things I've noticed when I got in this car today is, another thing, I've got a slow driver, then I've got an old people, old person on one of them electric scooters. It's, why do I, I get slow drivers literally everywhere I go. I'm not even, I'm not, like, this is a genuine frustration of mine. Um, yeah, two things that I noticed. So obviously, these are, these are BMW made, yeah, it's a German car. And when you get in it, it feels very German. Steering feels very sort of on point and rigid and firm. Uh, secondly, the thing that you notice over anything else when you drive it is the way it delivers power, yeah? Now, because I don't know the full background of this car, it's an old car, I don't know every owner that's owned it. So I don't know that if it's been tuned or not. To me, it feels like it has but I highly doubt that it has, okay? Because if, if it had it done, we would know about it when the guy sold it to us, yeah? It feels so quick, and the power delivery, that's what I was talking about, is third gear, foot on the floor, two and a half thousand revs, there's power there straight away, and for a 1.6 of any kind, that is unheard of. In 2006, minis, yeah? They, um, and then let's talk about, not talk about 2006 one yet, let's talk about this one first. So, something else that you notice, the third thing that I noticed, so steering's on point, power delivery is bloody brilliant. Thirdly, the character of this car, yeah? We've got, the Cooper S has got a center exit exhaust at the back. It's got a big bulging sort of bonnet on the, uh, bonnet vent, shall we say, uh, obviously feeding cold air to, not today, not no cold air today, but feeding air to the intercooler on top of the engine. <laughs> Now we're gonna, lorry. Um, other bits of character is the circles. You know the whole circle thing. The, the old or the original Mini had a, that's such a street place for lorry to be parked. Um, the dials, yeah? So the old Mini had this big circular dial in the middle of the dash. They've kept, kept that as a bit of character. It's still here and then in front of the drivers, in front of the driver, you've got the rev counter as well, again in like a circular pot. Nice little bits of character, and it is especially, I would say, quite a, a modern thing for its time, back when these come out in 2001 or whatever it was. It's pretty cool stuff, yeah? In 2006, that is what I was getting to, in 2006, they introduced the Mini Cooper S, but without a supercharger. They swapped the supercharger for a turbo. I'm pretty sure they changed the engine, don't quote me on that, but I do know that a common fault with them engines is the timing chain and I'm, I'm talking about common faults because from a car trading point of view this is quite important stuff and if you're about to buy a used mini you want to know this stuff you'll hear sometimes if you buy the wrong one a rattle under the bonnet now it ain't a terrible thing don't think the engine's knackered it ain't that it's the timing chain yeah and it, it does sound horrendous so you ain't gonna miss it but it's quite a pricey thing to repair all right so look out for that I'm pretty sure the reason why they introduced the whole turbo thing is because I've not daily driven a supercharged Cooper S before, but apparently they're not great on fuel, yeah? Which, I suppose, with any performance car, none of them are good on fuel, so I uh, don't, don't see why that's a problem, but turbos are supposedly 
better on fuel, they lose use less fuel and a bit more efficient for like emissions and stuff like that okay now the final thing with a mini is you can want to know you're going to want to know how it performs yeah and everyone who drives a mini will say <laughs> that it drives like a bloody go-kart how often do you hear that it drives like a go-kart sticks to the road goes around bends like a go-kart do you know what everyone who says that is not wrong they're fully right, it's, <laughs> it's so fun. You feel like you can do anything with it. The turbocharger, the turbocharger, supercharger is constantly screaming at her and for a 170 bhp, this is the quickest 170 bhp car I've ever driven. I'm not joking, through the whole rev range, it just keeps pulling and pulling. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So um, yeah, if it's terrible in fuel, it's welcome to be terrible in fuel because it's worth it, all right? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is uh, we've had some fun. I've talked about the interior, love the interior, very modern for its time. I like the steering wheel as well. I've said a lot of positive stuff about it. Sounds good, looks good, and just ticks a hell of a lot of boxes. But the thing that we all wanna know is how quick does this thing do to 60, yeah? So, um, the car that I've got in my mind, the car that I'm sort of comparing it to, is a Honda Civic Type R, an EP3. They've got a little bit more power and they're about the same weight, about 1300 kilos, yeah? This feels like it's got a lot more mid-range power, whereas a Civic Type R has a lot less mid-range power and all the power sort of near the top. So it's gonna be quite a good comparison. I've recently done a 0-60 test on a Civic Type R, yeah? And it done 0-60, I'm pretty sure, in 7.33 seconds, which, Oh no, I've got a car behind me. I'm banging on now. I'll get out of his way. Sorry, I had to move. I just sort of <laughs> stopped on the side of the road, begun banging on, and there's a car behind me. Uh, Nord 60, Civic Type R, EP3, with a draggy box, done a multiple amount of runs. It done Nord 60 in 7.33 seconds, which don't sound too quick, does it? But they're a great car. I ain't got nothing bad to say about the Civic Type R's. They're one of my favorite cars of all time. And I'm curious to see if this thing is quicker than the Civic Type R to 60. So we're gonna go off to my private roads and we're gonna give it a shot, see if I can beat the Civic Type R, all right? Let's go. All right, here it goes in. Like I say, the bloody, the big feet thing, it's just a bit annoying. You just struggle to sort of get your foot, the clutch pedal all the way to the floor, because. Yeah, you could do some like proper driving trees for this sort of thing. But um, anyway, drag is set up, camera's set up. I'm gonna do a few runs and quote the quickest time on cam in a sec, all right? So um, 060 in a Mini Cooper S that's 15 years old. It's gonna be announced very shortly, yeah? This, um, sounds so good, this car. In fact, there's a few little, a few little crackles as the revs dip. No, that's warm. I'll stop banging on. Three, two, one. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, wow. <laughs> Felt bloody quick, that did. I'll, uh, I'll switch back on in a sec and I'll let you know the times, yeah? <laughs> right, the summary of my 15 year old Cooper S, yeah? <laughs> Is it quicker than a Civic Type R? Now, uh, where do I start? I've done a lot of runs in it because I just wanted to maximize it as good as I could, yeah? I really struggled to get it to do 60 in less than seven seconds to start with. And as my runs went on, the times got shorter and shorter. Eventually, so I've already given away the answer, this is quicker than a Civic Type R to 60. Eventually, I managed to get this thing to do 60 in 6.34 seconds, which I am so impressed with. I'm not only impressed with that how quickly it goes to 60, but I'm also impressed with how it drives in general. And 
it, it's a seriously quick car. The thing that I struggled with more than anything was wheel spin. It was just putting, I was trying to put the power down, getting off the mark was just like, it, it was a bit of a task. I got it in the end and 6.34 seconds. And I think where this wins in two ways over a Civic Type R is, firstly, like I said earlier, the power delivery throughout the whole range is, is unbelievably good. And secondly, mine's just gone blank. Secondly, Secondly, that's what it is. Secondly, a Civic Type R, to get a Civic Type R to do 60, you have to use third gear. Whereas this car, you don't even have to use third, third gear. You just literally use the first two gears. There's no second gear change, so you've changed gear once. It's only needed one gear change to get this thing to 60. And um, that obviously helps a small delay uh, to 60, yeah? I don't know if I explain that very well. You know what I mean? Two gears 60, three gears 60 for a Super Type R. And I think that's um, gone against Type R as well. Type R's, uh, as a comparable car, I think they're, they're extremely fun. I, can't, I ain't got nothing bad to say about Type R's. I bloody love them cars, like I said earlier as well. They're one of my favorite cars of all time. So, but Mini Cooper S, I sort of see it here. I didn't really look twice at it, and I can't even remember which one of you commented, but someone commented, said, Cal, can you get out in the Cooper S? I'm glad you said that because uh, like I said, I wouldn't have even considered doing a video on it. Um, quick summary of how we work as well. I know I explain this in a lot of videos, but this is a trade car. So this will just get sold as it is with no warranty. We don't offer finance on this type of thing. It just goes as it is, yeah? This is on our auction side of the business where the prices all drop every hour, okay? The other side of our business is Binker Retail. We've recently launched that, and with Binker Retail, we offer finance, we offer warranties, we prep the cars up. They're to a different standard, but they're generally lower mileage cars or, or newer cars, yeah? Cars that we can offer with that kind of like retail experience, all right? So if you're looking for a car, we're based in Milton Keynes, binker.co.uk and binkerretail.co.uk is where we have to advertise all of our cars, all right? I'm going to end it here. Don't forget to give me a follow on Instagram at Calvin's Car Diary. I'm going to post the leaderboards and show you exactly where this falls in the leaderboards on my Insta story right now. I'm going to do it as soon as this video is live. So if you want to see the leaderboard of all, all of my cars, I've done draggy times of all time, go and check out my Instagram, like I say, at Calvin's Car Diary. Uh, if, make sure you give me a subscribe if you're new. If you want to see any cars, you know, have a look on my website. If there's anything you want to see on my channel in this sort of uh, style of video, do let me know in the comments below. And yeah, so hit subscribe, hit like if you like the video, and I'll see you in my next video, all right? Bye. In the next episode of Diary of a Car Trader, I answer a question that I keep getting asked. What do I like better? a BMW M135i or a Volkswagen Golf R. I'll see you on Sunday at 6pm.